Alrighty guys, Balfour Ferry Terminal. This is the longest free ferry in the world. It's part of the BC Highway System, same with that cable ferry you saw, as the other cable ferry and all the ferries we take. We're here, and then the ferry goes across here, and then you go down, it takes you into Creston. Now, a little cool tip, for especially for wintertime travel, this is fairly low lying in here, uh, versus the Crow's Nest Highway, which goes here, the three, it goes up through the mountains, there's lots of snow, it's not all that fun. So what you could do is you could go to Nelson instead, and then take this 3A, take the ferry across, saves you gas too, and then drive down here, because you just follow the lake and it's low, you're, there's no summits or anything like that to deal with. Crawford Bay, that's on the other side. Gray Creek, that's on the other side. Boswell and Kuskanook. Kutanaha, people have hunted fish and gathered. Sturgeon knows canoe. There are signs of frontier history wherever you go in the Kootenays, from sunken stern wheelers, ancient fruit trees to miners drawn in the lure of silver and gold, enormously rich silver strikes about waves of men and women. Yeah, we're in silver country, followed by the railways and stern wheelers. Riondel, 1882, staked the famous Bluebell. Proctor, that's the other, that's the cable ferry, Harrop Proctor. And then, this is Kootenay Lake, this whole thing here, Kootenay Lake. Winita Dam. Boundary Dam, Seven Mile Dam, Brilliant Generating Station, Arrow Generating Station, look, Coralin, Upper, Lower, Bonington, South Slocan, all, we just drove through, so we just drove all these dams. Yeah, so longest free ferry in the world, guys, like I said, part of the BC Highway Systems. They used to charge people money for it, but uh, they did, they, that went away with, and now it's free, so there's, you gotta catch it at a certain time though, right? Like, this is a, this is like an hour long ferry or something, or an hour and a half long, but it's literally like, it's 100% free. So if you wanna take a ferry, you don't wanna spend any money, though this is where you do it. So this is the terminal, guys. That's the Balfour. There's a snack bar on the ferry. We're not taking it today though, but. See Bensa piles there for the bridge, cross bracing, cross members, get their beams and then the deck. This is the way we would have gone without having to deal with the elevations on the crow's nest. There's a smelter in Pilot Bay too. So once you get over Crawford Bay, you can see it on the way on the ferry as you're going, coming into uh, Kootenay Bay. You'll see a uh, big old smokestack, smelter stack. That was a silver smelter, smelting the blue bell ore, but it fell down where it was canceled due to coal uh, problems. guys so we're just at Ainsworth here there you have caves here so Ainsworth is one of the only hot springs like we have multiple hot springs right in the cusp radium Fairmont halfway Liard up north uh, we got a bunch of different hot springs but this one Ainsworth has caves in it so like you, you pay the admission right and you get to use the normal pool so they got just kind of like a pool but it's the water's heated right it's nice hot water it's like being in a hot tub and then they have these caves that you can go into like in the side of the mountain and you can see like you can take a shower from mountain spring hot mountain spring water just showering you in the cave it comes off the cave roof just sprays your head oh, a nice little shower you know smells really good in there read the Ainsworth sign here during the first weeks of the 1882 prospecting season, a small camp was established at Hot Springs on the western shore of Kootenay Lake. California millionaire John C. Ainsworth purchased Hot Springs Camp in 1883 and he renamed it Ainsworth. In 1884, the Lulu on Creek was the first mine staked in the area. The Gallagher, the Highlander, 
Crack, number one, Silver Horde, and the Skyline Mines were the other early producers. Initial ores averaged 100 ounces of silver per ton, and zinc ores soon became more common than silver in most of the mines. With over 20 people in 1891, Ainsworth was Kootenai Lake's largest community. It boasted a telephone and telegraph service and Hot Springs News newspaper. By year's end, Slocan's silver discoveries had caused an exodus to Caslow and Slocan communities that depopulated Ainsworth. Over the next 70 years, the town declined despite occasional periods of increased mining. Individuals and small companies still prospect intermittently. However, the Hot Springs and quaint historic buildings continue to attract visitors yearly. And the discharge here, you can see this is all water coming out of the, the hot springs up top. See the mineral deposits? Heavily mineralized water. You actually kind of float on it. You get, you're more buoyant in this water than you are with uh, normal water. But yeah, so you, you know, you pay 18 bucks or whatever and uh, you stay as long as you like. And uh, they've got the hot pool, like the big pool, which is like a fair temperature water. But nice, still warm, still nice. And then we've also got uh, the caves. And the caves are really cool. Hot, steamy, dark, all kinds of uh, formations, mineral formations, different colors, water exiting out of rocks, drifts. It's really cool, guys. The caves are really cool. You look behind me, we are in Caslow. Beautiful Kootenai Lake behind us, and uh, oh, mountains going up eight, 9,000 feet. You know, very Switzerland-esque. So, just gorgeous, man. It's a gorgeous lake. So we're gonna walk the railway grade. So the Caslow and Slocan Railway. So this is this would be the grade, guys. The train would have come down here from, from Sandon, and then transported the ore to the beach here, stern wheeler be tied up here, the landing, and then transported down to Nelson. This is the Mui. I did a video on it last year about the CPR flag and talked a little bit about it, but this is the rail grade. You can see nice and flat, graded pretty evenly. Some dolphins over there. It's a gorgeous boat though. It's absolutely gorgeous this boat and these things were a big deal back in the day man so this rail grade you follow this guys some guys do I uh, take you all the way to Sandon and make sure you check out my video on Sandon because we did a video on Sandon crystal clear Kootenai Lake just an absolutely gorgeous lake gorgeous country We were walking the grade there by the Mui Yi, and uh, I was talking about those dolphins and how they're all broken. So, look at what that, that's the rail line. They left the rail line from the Castle Silicon Railway. So, you follow this up to Sandin, they would have loaded the ore in Sandin onto a train, and then the train would have made its way all the way down the mountain, or through the mountains, come out to here, onto this landing, and then the ship could tie up to these dolphins, or, you know, whatever they were doing and then they have the railway the railway trains and you can see one two three four tracks um for multiple trains they probably have a switching and stuff and a lot of a lot of it's probably gone right but this is this is the old castle slocan railway terminal way and it would eventually became cpr but like this that's that's the old railway terminal it's submerged underwater there and they've just left it and then if you look all the way along here it's all just railway and then that's the that's the backdrop to it all there so cool yeah this would be the museum we're gonna check this place out oh yeah they got an ore cart there oh stamp mill the denver rock drill 
manufactured Denver, USA, Sullivan. Oh, Sullivan mine cart. Alrighty, guys. So we're in the Cowslow Mining Museum. Uh, this is going to be a really, really good one, guys. I'm excited for this. So let's take a look here. Tools of the trade. Scarn, rose quartz, Kalina. Oh, calcopyrite. Some calcopyrite there. Pilot base smelter slag. We were gonna go to the pilot base smelter, but granite, calcite, fluorite, kidney mine samples. Sullivan Mine, Bluebell, Leroy, Standard, Whitewater, Enterprise, Silver King, Lucky Jim. These are all the Sullivan Hot Muck. Bluebell, the Outcrop, Standard, Silver King Mine, Nelson, Whitewater, Retallic, Bluebell, Outcrop. All the different types of rocks here you can find. Lots of rocks here. Industrial minerals. Outcrop minerals. Kootenai mining camps, lured by the vast mineral potential, a hardy breed of prospectors and mining men thrashed their way into the Kootenai wilderness and made rich discoveries. Within a decade, towns spreading up everywhere, mere prospects evolved into mines. A vast transportation network was set up and the entire region was explored, populated and developed. Hot Springs Camp, that was the initial, so this is initially Ainsworth, was initially called Hot Springs Camp. George Ainsworth, the steering really captain there of the Ainsworth shipping empire, also the inland empire as well. Kootenai Lake, right? Ainsworth. Caslow to the north, Bluebell across the way there, the Bluebell mine, the Nelson smelter, Pilot Bay smelter, because there was a smelter in Nelson and a smelter in Pilot Bay. These are all the claims though, the claim map. You can see, right? This would be all silver lead zinc ores here. Every piece of land you can find, it's all taken. Some weird shaped claims on here though. Steam driven pump for dewatering shafts. Sullivan steam hoist winch, used for raising ore up the shaft. So that's the Sullivan Sullivan mine steam hoist winch. Oh, the Cunningham mine, Slocan, BC, geological plan. Oh, it's a geological map of sand in here. Tons of ore, man, from the mines. The Idaho, the Ruth Hope, the Payne, the wonderful mine. These are all came out of different mines. Dickinson Mines, the Corneth Mine, the Last Chance, the Josenby Tunnel, Lucky Jim Mine, Kalispell. Various artifacts recovered from all over town there. Early mining claim post. A Jim Crow used for bending, oh, rails. Slug tobacco. Drifter, Holman Rock Drill from the Utica Mine, Eugene Peterson, born in Fosk, Norway, moved to Sandin with his family in 1922. His many professions include store clerk, miner, prospector, mine owner, trapper, and logger. Jack all trades, man. A lot of the little timers were. Bullet holes, eh? Some shooting. Blue Star Mines. The complex geological history of the Kootenays has resulted in a wide variety of high concentration of minerals, but finding this hidden wealth required establishment as well. That's what prospecting is, right? Ah, whiskers reduce silicosis. I've actually thought about this before. A careful examination has been made and it's been found that clean-shaven men suffered from the disease the most, that those that had a strong moustache were less afflicted, and that those who had bushy beards were practically clear of silicosis. 
By natural reasoning, it follows that full beards being moist and the breath of the wearers acted as respirators which held back injurious dust from entering the lungs. We have a little vagrant wonder as to whether this discovery will receive attention it deserves and whether we shall, in the not too far distant future, have the pleasure of watching a shift of fully bearded miners go underground. Yeah, good old beards, man. It's good for you. Radiator in the summertime, too. The Kootenai Mining Camps. So we were gonna do Beaton, Camborne, Ferguson, Trout Lake, Gerard. We're gonna probably do this at some point. I don't know if it's gonna be this trip. We gotta do Lardo, Gold Camp area. Duncan River here. Widowmaker drill. Silicosis, right? We found out about that. This machine used to drill dry, producing much deadly dust that caused the miners to die young from silicosis. Get a beard and apparently that won't happen. The lost gumboot mine. Gumboots, right? Gumboot miners. Mining equipment. Watch fob salesman gave these to the operators to encourage sales. D24 Ingersoll ran piston drill on a tripod, patented in 18... 81. It was built to replace the original Blurleys. Diamond drill, guys. This is a diamond drill rig. Prospecting. Okay, got the controls there. The rotary. Burles, bros. Alrighty, let's continue the tour here. I see a water wheel. Pretty simple, guys. Water comes into here, these pockets. Rotates this wheel, makes the piston work. Aerial tramway buckets. See the different size buckets here. Cable. Shivs. Lots of shivs here. Governor. Yep, governor. First stoper, a new drill overhead. It was invented in 1890 by C.H. Shaw, a machinist from Denver, Colorado. This drill used pneumatic leg to hold the face. This is our family. This is our museum. That's down the lake, er, down toward Nelson, or out of yep. here toward Nelson. Yep. And this is just that, I, but this is all our family, yeah. friends. Yeah. And that's the Amazon mine. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool, man. Safety fuse, carbide lamps, pliers. It's cool, man. Blaster's handbook, dynamite. Small press and drill, chippy. Jack legs. We seen that was in action. We saw those at the, uh, the mine there. Nitro Powder Co. Dynamite. Giant Powder Co. Gelatin Dynamite. 40% strength. It sounds like booze. Sandin. Downtown Sandin, guys. That's what it would look like. I don't have a bell yet. Ainsworth there. The Big Ledge. Mike McLanders, the Bluebell Mine, Limestone, Post Rock for the Bluebell Deposits. The Kootenays began to hum with mining activity in the development during the 1880-1920 mining boom era. The earliest hard rock mining in BC occurred at the Bluebell Mining on the Kootenay Lake. The Bluebell story was a wild west saga of early discovery, salting, murder, setbacks, intrigue, and finally production. 
The Google is located near the center of a structural belt named the Kootenai Arc. This region of sedimentary and volcanic rocks consists mainly of lead and zinc deposits. It is believed that this ore was deposited by mineral bearing hot water solutions. Alrighty, chainsaws, eh? He doesn't like a chainsaw, so. Sure. Okay, I got the axes and the ants. A lot of those. Lots of chainsaws. I did a lot of chainsaw stuff um, before, guys. Lots of logging, basically. Lardo. All around here, everywhere. Logging, 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 and more logging. Portable drag saws, yeah. Nice. That's a drag saw. Right there. Scott air packs were used to mine rescue. As CBAs, guys, super important. Town site beaver ever claim or prospect had the potential to become a thriving metropolis. As mushrooms sprang up overnight, so the entire Kootenai springs alive with towns and mining camps. Bush trail to get to the mine. Build a railway if you could do that, or an aerial tramway, and then transport the ore to the landing for the stern wheeler that takes it down to trail or smelter, right? So you can actually get your money's worth out of it. The Rundle Power Thar. It is constructed of galvanized iron, is strong, durable, compact, and surrounded by water, thus keeping the powder in a constant working order. As the tubes are open at both ends, the powder is less confined and there is no danger of part of the stick being left in the tube. 1893, Kaslo was incorporated, the first city in the West Kootenai region. In a busy place it was. In 1898, when it was thriving, Kaslo boasted 27 saloons, 14 hotels, 14 barbershops, and one school teacher. Almost done here, I think. Alrighty guys, so we just finished up the uh, museum there. Oh man, whoo, oh, that was good. So it was exciting, it was good man, lots of history. Uh, that place needs a solid couple hours, at least. Uh, lots of history there, super well done. Dave and Teresa are amazing. Thank you to both of them for uh, having the museum and keeping this alive. So we'll just go to the back here. Sullivan ore cart. It's cool. Sullivan mine. Very interesting. Stamp mills. Another Pelton wheel here. Flume. Put a flume here. Drop the water into here and then boom. You're working. Drill. All kinds of stuff, guys. So anyways, like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit, hit the bell icon to get notified. And uh, Sasquatch Prospector out. Oh.